So the Game Maker Studio 2.3.1 update added a couple new features as far as building finished games go. One notable change that I've already made videos on is the ability to export to ARM CPUs instead of the usual x86 CPUs. Uh, for most people, that means you can now run your game on a Raspberry Pi. Apple, I know, recently has launched a new line of ARM-based computers. So if you want to build your games for those, you will need the new ARM export capabilities that comes with Game Maker Studio 2.3.1. I have a feeling those are the actual reason Yo-Yo Games decided to introduce the ARM option, more so than the Raspberry Pi, but who knows. Anyway, another new addition that came with 2.3.1 that was kind of just dropped in casually into the release notes without much fanfare. I don't think it was really mentioned that it was going to be added prior to this, and I think it only appeared on the roadmap fairly recently is the ability to build 64-bit executables for your games. So to drastically oversimplify this for anyone who's not familiar with 64-bit versus 32-bit and other kinds of techno babble, this refers to the amount of computer memory that a piece of software can access. It refers to the length of the memory addresses. A 32-bit program uses memory addresses that are 32 bits long, with each bit being a digit in base 2. That gives you about 4 billion bytes of memory that your program can access if it's 32-bit which is about 4 gigabytes. If you try to allocate more memory than that, your game will run out of memory and crash. A 64-bit piece of computer software, on the other hand, will use memory addresses that are 64 bits long, and since each bit is a base 2 digit, or at least a base 2 value, this works out to be 2 to the 64, which is about 16 quintillion bytes of memory that the program can address without running out. Or if you prefer to use SI prefixes, about 16 exabytes of storage of memory that your software can access. And if you've never heard either of those words before, that is how brain-bogglingly huge those numbers are. Hey. There are some other technical specifications of 32-bit computer software and CPUs versus 64-bit, which I'm not going to get into right now because I don't want this video to turn into a 15-minute monologue on the subject. So if you're interested in learning more about that, I'll have some supplemental reading in the video description. The part that you need to know is that Game Maker now can build 64-bit executables when you make your game. So the Game Maker Studio IDE itself, which is this thing here that I'm dragging around on the screen that you use to actually make your game, this software is already 64-bit. If you have an older 32-bit computer, Game Maker Studio 2 will simply not run on it. That is not true for the games that it makes. If I were to run the game uh, through the IDE and let it run, and I am going to mute this sound because it's actually kind of distracting, and I, I would like to be able to hear myself think. Um, if you look at the game in Task Manager, you can see Game Maker Studio 2 Runner, Copyright Yo-Yo Games Limited 2020 32-bit. This is a 32-bit uh, computer program. Uh, same would be true if you built a game using the Create Executable button. I am just going to uh, create that there. And that's going to take a couple seconds to happen. And uh, when it's done, uh, you can run the executable. 64-bit runner, you will see that this title is a lie, and as soon as it actually opens... Uh, once again, you can go back to Task Manager, and you can see a Game Maker Studio 2 game, 32-bit. This, this is, once again, a 32-bit uh, piece of computer software. So I can dismiss that, I don't need it anymore. So if you want to create a 64-bit executable for your game instead of a 32-bit one, a uh, few things. Like I said, this was introduced with Game Maker Studio 2.3.1, which is currently on the beta release. If you're watching this video on or around when this video comes out, Game Maker Studio 2.3.1 is still in beta. And if you are currently just using the stable version, which is the main version of Game Maker, uh, this option will not be there, so you will have to log into your Yoyo Games account on their website, go to the products page, and download and install the beta version separately. If you're watching this video deep in the future, this will no longer be the case. Anyway, what you have to do to set it up after that is go to Game Options over here under Quick Access, go to Windows, and if you scroll down to the bottom of the General tab in Windows, there are a few options. The one that we care about is Use X64 Windows Runtime. Click OK. And if you run your game again after that, and if you look in the Task Manager to see what it's doing, uh, you can see appropriately Game Maker Studio 2 Runner Copyright Yo-Yo Games 2020. This is a 64-bit executable. It does not have a note that it is uh, running in 32-bit mode like some other 32-bit applications that I have do. Uh, Steam, Adobe Photoshop, because I have an ancient version of Photoshop. This is what we want. So let me uh, close out of that. Let me close the task manager. If you go into the game options for other operating systems, this option will not be there. 
I believe Mac OS uh, executables have to be 64-bit because Apple doesn't believe in compatibility and um, dropped support for 32-bit software a couple a couple versions of uh, Mac OS ago. The option is not here for Ubuntu either. That I do not know why, because as far as I know, there are still 32-bit versions of Ubuntu running around, as well as 64-bit. And you would, uh, you would expect the ability to be able to choose would be nice. If anyone wants to enlighten me on the subject in the comments, go for it. Anyway, the same thing would happen if you clicked the uh, the build executable button, the save executable button, and uh, and did that and checked its bitness in the task manager. I don't think I need to go through and do that at this point. So what does this mean? I said earlier that 32-bit computer software could use up to 4 gigabytes of memory before it would just run out and tell you that it's out of memory and crash. For Game Maker games, this isn't quite true. In practice, for various reasons, the actual limit tended to be more around 2 gigabytes of memory the Game Maker could use. Either way, that limit is effectively gone. For all intents and purposes, 64-bit software can address up to 16 exabytes of data. That's effectively infinite. If you put all of the random access memory that has ever been manufactured in history into a single machine, I doubt it would even come close to that amount. There are a few other nice things that could arise from this. If you run 32-bit software on a 64-bit machine, there is technically an emulation layer that the operating system does to make that happen. So building your game into a 64-bit executable should theoretically give you a small performance boost. Again, in practice, this is Game Maker. GML is not exactly a fast language. And I very much doubt that that speed boost would be anywhere near noticeable. Compared to, you know, the actual code that's running your game. Again, if you're interested in the technical specifications of 64-bit software versus 32-bit software, I'll have some additional reading in the video description. So, this all sounds great, but there are potential downsides to this. One is that if you were to, and I'm going to go back and switch this back to a 32-bit runtime for the time being, one, and I'm just going to say this, most people don't actually need more than 4 gigabytes of memory for the Game Maker games. For a vast majority of Game Maker games, if you go anywhere near that limit, it's because you have a memory leak somewhere. Game Maker is not a game engine that lends itself well to large AAA games which demand a huge resource budget. And as great as removing the 4 gigabyte memory limit sounds, it's probably not something that's actually going to affect a whole lot of projects. Another one, which is actually more of a downside than just, I guess, a like theory versus practice thing, is that if you are using an extension in your project which takes the form of a 32-bit DLL, those will not work in 64-bit mode. So DLLs, for those who are not aware, are essentially compiled code extensions, which can be used by other programs such as your Game Maker game. They themselves do not contain executable code and they can't run on their own, but they can be attached to other programs to do various things. They're not quite as common now in Game Maker as they were 10 years ago when cross-platform wasn't as big of a thing and Game Maker itself was much more limited, but they're still around. I'm going to just grab one that I have over here in a folder. Uh, this is for 3D collisions. Obviously, I'm not actually going to use it. I'm not actually going to use this code, but I am going to import the asset package and let's add all. And I am going to run the game using it, and we are going to see that it's not going to work in 64-bit mode because this is a 32-bit DLL. If I were to open the project in Explorer and go to uh, data files, collisions.dll here, this is a 32-bit DLL. I am going to run the C underscore init function that it uses, and this is the function that is going to increase the font size. This is the function that actually links uh, the DLL to Game Maker that identifies the functions in it that it can use. In 32-bit mode, this will be fine, and this won't uh, this won't cause any issues. The game runs fine. Uh, the the DLL was linked. It doesn't do anything again because I haven't done anything with the code that it contains. Uh, but if I were to go and go to Game Options Windows, use 64-bit runtime, and if I were to try to run the game now, we are going to see that this is going to explode in my face. Uh, you can see error defining an external function in script c underscore init line 13, which is uh, which is the first line of this uh, of this um, script file, where you try to external define a function and it just doesn't work. The same would be true for an extension that uses a DLL. If you're using something like the fmod for Game Maker extension or uh, Yellow Afterlife's Apollo extension, which is for Lua scripting, those extensions would also currently not work using a 64-bit runtime. In the future, I'm sure that's going to change as people recompile their DLLs to uh, be themselves 64-bit so that they can be used here once again. I'm sure Yellow Afterlife is going to be on that in no time. For him, it's kind of just a matter of when he has time because he has a million extensions for Game Maker that are all going to need to be updated for this. 
Others may not be so lucky. Uh, this here 3D collision system that I'm showing off the game not working with. This here 3D collision system example that I'm using to show the game breaking, I have been trying for years to track down the person who made this. If nothing else, so that I could take over the project and um, add some of the other features of Bullet to it. Recompile it to 64-bit if necessary, but I have not had any luck. I do not know where Venomous has actually gone. All traces of this person kind of vanished from the internet after like 2017. I'm getting off topic. Anyway, this has been the 64-bit runtime. It's pretty simple, turning it on is just one checkbox in the Windows settings. It doesn't otherwise really change anything that you'll be using to make your game, aside from the little thing with DLLs if you happen to be using any of those. You'll know a kind of glaring omission in this video is uh, the matter of the Yo-Yo compiler. It should work pretty much the same. The only difference will be that instead of GameMaker just using a pre-compiled 64-bit runner, when it compiles the C++ that's generated from your GML, it'll just compile it into a 64-bit program itself. The Yo-Yo compiler is just a whole rabbit hole that I want to make another video on, or realistically probably multiple videos on at some point in the future. For now, I'm just going to say yes, it exists, it should work with a 64-bit runner, and um, and that's all I have to say about that subject. So, I am going to stop now. My name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games. I didn't really write any code in this video itself, but I have a link to this base project in the video description that you can go and poke around in and use to experiment on stuff and all that kind of thing. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there are links to those in all the usual places. Otherwise, I try to post about two videos a week, sometimes three. This is probably going to end up being a shorter video, so I'll probably have a tag along with something else. I hope you found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Edward Holt, Indie Punch, Jason, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, Head over to the Patreon page in the video description to join the fun.